get more gas for asteroids. Asteroids! It's Saturday the 9th of September. I think I got it right this time. My name's Juan Brown and you're watching the Blanco Lario channel. Right now, Hurricane Irma is heading up the northeast coast of Cuba and about ready to make its bid to the north towards Florida. Sustained winds right now, 125 miles an hour, puts it in category three status. Remember the difference between category three, four, and five is not that much, maybe on the order of 20 or 30 miles an hour. Still a very huge storm and of course, on the Weather Channel and all the channels, they're talking about how it's going to regain strength as it leaves the land over Cuba and heads over the warm water in between Cuba and the Keys. So how do weather forecasters know when and where this hurricane is going to start that turn to the north? As a commercial pilot, you're kind of an amateur meteorologist. You've got a ton of aviation weather data you carry around with you all the time. And the jet stream is basically where we live, especially on long range international flying. So we have a very good picture or feel for the weather and the winds aloft up in the jet stream. What's so important about the jet stream? It's what shapes our weather in the Northern Hemisphere. So today meteorologists are good about telling us when and where the hurricane's going to move, but they don't do a good job of explaining why it's moving. One reason I believe is meteorologists have gotten away from the old 240 millibar isobar chart, the classic old weather chart. Remember 30, 40 years ago before all this great satellite technology, the weatherman had a beautiful hand-drawn map showing the highs and lows and the bars of equal pressure and where the fronts would be. That old school weather chart is a fantastic road map that can clearly show you the way the weather is going to move. So I'll pull up some of those old charts and share them with you here and that'll really help explain how Hurricane Irma is making its bid to the north. But before we do that, let's take it at a macro view of the weather with a look at the globe. Hey kids, what do you got there? The globe of the world. Can you tell us where we live? Um, uh, uh, the United States of America. America. Um, is this California over here? That's right. Yeah. So now can you tell me where Florida is? Down here. Down there? And where about is the hurricane right now? Mm, in near Tampa and... Um, well, that's where it's headed, but it's right now, it's right down here by Cuba. Okay, Cuba. Yeah, and it's headed kind of towards Naples and Tampa. Did you get all that, Pete? Time for a quick Geography 101 review with the kids globe here. With the sun hitting the equator, being the warmest temperatures right here, the air rises and with cold air over the poles, air rises over the equator and sets up and subsides over the poles, setting up a circular motion like this. Set the earth into motion when with Coriolis effect, air rising from the equator in the northern hemisphere tends to spin off to the east, creating a strong jet stream in the middle latitudes. And of course, Weather 101 review, high pressure rotates clockwise, low pressure counterclockwise. That sets up the river of highs and lows that the, that the jet stream has to navigate through and its trip around the globe. Remember the atmosphere rotates along with the globe at all times. Now let's go back and look at those aviation charts that's going to show the motion of Hurricane Irma. Here's the tropical surface analysis chart for the 9th of September. The high pressure in the middle Atlantic is what keeps these tropical depressions, which eventually turn into hurricanes, down low and traveling from east to west. These tropical depressions are formed off the coast of Africa near the Sahara Desert where dust and dirt blown out of the desert and over the ocean give the clouds the particulate matter they need to form these storms.
Back here in the United States, we can best see the weather patterns in the 300 millibar chart here at flight level 300. And here at 30,000 feet, we can get a pretty good cross-section view of the jet stream here on the 9th of September, shown in green here. And you can see a big dip in the jet stream in the northeast and the remnants of Hurricane Harvey departing to the northeast. Here too you can also see the steering forces for Hurricane Irma, the two high pressure areas to the left and right of the hurricane. And the size and strength of these two high pressure areas are what's guiding Hurricane Irma up into Florida. So as you can guess, there's a lot of moving parts to this puzzle, and if you could animate these charts and put them into motion, you could really get a feel for the forecast. And one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle to solve is the strength and inertia of the hurricane, and that's where our friends, the Hurricane Hunters, from the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron in Keesler Air Force Base, Biloxi, Mississippi, come into play. Using late model C-130J aircraft, these folks were able to extract data from inside the hurricane that no other form of technology can gather. Using the data extracted from these missions, they can fine tune weather forecasts and improve them by as much as 30%, saving millions of dollars and human life. We'll talk more about the Hurricane Hunter's unique mission and how they do it in a future update, but right now I gotta go to work myself. So in the meantime, stay dry, stay safe, stay out of harm's way. And thank you for your continued support of this station. Does anybody tell you at school the earth is flat? No. That's right. That's why sometimes when you think about it, the sky looks kind of roundish to me. Yeah?